So in this video, I want to talk about the unexpected results that we attained in our macromolecules lab. So as some of you may have noticed, when you added the soda or the sports drink to the Biuret solution, initially it was blue, but as it sat over time, it went to a brownish color. This is unexpected. We, we expected the blue color as a negative test for proteins because based on the nutritional facts, neither of these two solutions have proteins. But we didn't expect this. So the final lab of this particular unit was intended to kind of help you determine why you got this particular result. So there are a couple of things we have to keep in mind when we're talking about these two solutions and why we might have seen this. The first thing we have to think about is, did this result look like any of the positive results of our other solutions? So if you look at your positive controls for reducing sugars, for starch, and for proteins, what you should have seen was a brownish red color for reducing sugars, a bluish black for starch, and then a purple color for proteins. So this obviously doesn't match this potential color, and this one doesn't. Now, the brown we saw here wasn't exactly the same color as what we saw here, but this is at least a potential lead and a link between these two results. So the next question we need to ask is, what is there in this solution and these two solutions that may be causing this? So let's start with the Bayou Red. And the question I want to introduce and talk about first is, when we're thinking about the reducing sugars test, remember that the detection agent we use for reducing sugars is Benedict's. While for proteins, we of course use Biuret. Now, is there a common ingredient in these two solutions? Well, one of the primary ingredients in Benedict's is copper sulfate. In fact, it's the copper and copper, copper sulfate that reacts with the free carbonyl group in our reducing sugars that results in that brown color when we form copper oxide. Biuret is composed of sodium hydroxide and sulfate. So, yet again, we have another link. We have a common ingredient between the Benedict's and the Biuret. So, we have this copper sulfate. Okay, so this is the first link we've developed now. The color is turning brown potentially because this copper sulfate is reacting with something. Now, what is it reacting with? Okay, so let's think about what classifies something as a reducing sugar. Okay, so we know, first off, that we're potentially looking at the reaction of copper sulfate with something. Well, reducing sugars are sugars, typically mono and sometimes disaccharides, that have a free carbonyl group. When this free carbonyl group is present in the molecule, the oxygen in the carbonyl group reacts with the copper in copper sulfate to form copper oxide. And this is the brown color that you saw in your reducing sugars test. And it's potentially also what's causing the brown color in our biuret. So now the question we have to ask is, do soda and sports drink potentially contain reducing sugars? And if so, which ones? And what you found by going through the ingredients list of those two solutions is that between the two we had in 
sports drink. We had fructose in high fructose corn syrup. I'm sorry, in soda, we had fructose. In sports drink, we had dextrose, which is also glucose. We had sucrose. And if you didn't do the background research, we can't say right now if we do or don't know that this is a reducing sugar. So just keep in mind, it's a disaccharide, so we're going to test it to see if it's a reducing sugar. So we've got these three potential candidates that might be reducing sugars. These two are monosaccharides, so they should be. This one is a disaccharide, and we don't know if it is or is not. Now, whenever you're setting up an experiment, if you see something that the two solutions you're testing or the multitude of solutions you're testing have in common, you typically also want to test that substance just to make sure that the reason why you're seeing your results is not due to the presence of that. So if we go through the ingredients for soda and sports drink, we find another ingredient that happens to be in both. And that ingredient is called citric acid. Because it's in both solutions, it's found in sports drink and in soda, we need to test it just to verify that this is not what's causing that result. Maybe the result we're seeing is not due to the presence of a reducing sugar. Maybe the result is due to the fact that this is present in both solutions. So the way that you set this up was you took 40% fructose, glucose, sucrose, and citric acid, and you place them into test tubes. So now that we've come to these conclusions, we need to test our hypotheses. If we think, in fact, it is the fact that there are reducing sugars and that those reducing sugars are reacting with the copper sulfate, we have to test this to validate or invalidate our hypothesis. So I've drawn a chart here, and this represents the test tubes we created. You created two test tubes for fructose, two for glucose, two for sucrose, and two for citric acid. You added fructose, fructose tubes, glucose, sucrose, and citric acid to their respective tubes. And then in the tubes that had an R following these letters, you added Benedict's, and we boiled those. And when we boiled fructose with Benedict's, we found that it is indeed a reducing sugar. And the solution turned that brownish-red color that's indicative of the formation of copper oxide, signifying that fructose has a free carbonyl group, and again, to bring it all home, is therefore a reducing sugar. Glucose is also a reducing sugar, so when we added Benedict's to glucose, you also see the brown color. Now we need to test sucrose and citric acid. Now, citric acid is not a reducing sugar, but because both sports drink and lemon lime soda contain citric acid, we just want to verify that in the event that it's not the reducing sugars, we need to also verify that it's not this that's causing the color change. Because both solutions have citric acid, we have to test it. Okay, so we add sucrose to Benedict's reagent, and it stays blue, even when we boil it, signifying that sucrose, even though it's a disaccharide, is not a reducing sugar. It does not have a free carbonyl group. Citric acid also remains blue, is therefore not a reducing sugar. So now what we're looking for is when we add the biuret, ideally, ideally what we will see is a similar coloration for the reducing sugars and a lack of that coloration in the non-reducing sugars. So when you add your biuret to the fructose, after 10 minutes, you probably notice that it indeed turned brown. Okay, so so far so good. Then we added the glucose and the biuret, and lo and behold, it also turned brown. Now comes the true test. When we add the sucrose, we see no color change. So this remains blue. And a final test, just to verify that it wasn't the citric acid that was contributing to the brown color. When we add citric acid with biuret, it also remains blue. So the results that we can take away from this, the reason why the soda and the sports drink tested negative for proteins, but then gave us this unexpected result, are due to the presence of these reducing sugars in each. Soda has high fructose corn syrup, while the sports drink had glucose. The presence of those reducing sugars 
results in the formation of copper oxide from the copper sulfate in Biuret solution. Conversely, the sucrose and the citric acid did not contribute to this brown color in the Biuret. And that's not a surprise to us because those are not reducing sugars. So we have now supported our hypothesis that the reason that we got this unexpected result is because of the presence of reducing sugars, not the presence of anything else.